and screaming coming from CP. I mean, even during warm-ups yesterday, crowd pleasers were just yelling at everybody. I'm casting with Gaskin! <laughs> yeah! Even T2 getting hyped here. But we, we casted the, the NA qualifiers uh, leading up to Vegas, uh, and we saw crowd pleasers come to their own, and we said, this is a team we've really got to look out for, and on land, they could be very scary, but I think going up against Optic, they might just meet their match. Game number one is going to be Truth Capture the Flag. Tom, how do you see this one playing out? The game's getting started. Let's go. <laughs> We're starting this one off with Royal 2. He's going to go into the window and lay down some cover fire over here. Everyone obviously knows CTF Truth. We've seen it a couple times today. Optic Gaming, they are definitely the favorites in this match. It doesn't mean crowd pleasers can't do it. They're extremely aggressive. If they can get some momentum, that is the name of their game. Gas and this flag's already being pulled from I was going to say, area. speaking of aggression, there's the flag already moving in the hands of Lethal, and this could be a very early cap, and he's having to turn around. He is getting pressure from behind. Is anyone else on his team able to pick that flag up? It looks like Snakebite's trying to make some work with it as well, but it doesn't look like Optic going to be able to put this one in just yet. Plenty of pressure coming in, but here comes two really important kills, and there's the flag now moving. Frosty should be able to easily slam this one home, and that's going to be a nice early lead for Optic. So that's one way to silence the crowd pleasers by just putting a flag in within about 40 seconds. Yeah, and it's tough when you are the crowd pleasers and you're going against one of the teams with probably the most fan support there is, too. So that's going to be pretty tough. But the thing is, is after watching Optic Gaming lose that first game, they really tightened up, got serious, and just realized that they need to come out and dominate and play some perfect Halo over here. So I'm expecting to see them continue to play some really, really high level Halo. But again, that doesn't mean that the crowd pleasers can't do it. The big difference maker, in my opinion, is the guy that is the loudest on the team, which is Kratos. So let's go ahead and see what Kratos is doing off of the spawn, because if his shot is on, he's always putting himself in very, I guess you can say, critical positions on the map for his team, because he's always going and doing the dirty work, getting the objective done, and pushing forward and advancing on the map. So if he's advancing on the map and shooting well, that's pretty much a recipe for success for this crowd pleasers team. So let's see if he's able to get into pink here and get control with this camo coming up. But what a nade from Lethal. And to be fair, I oh, <laughs> look where that nade yeah. came from. Too. That's absolutely crazy. And he almost finds the triple as well. Looks for a, a double, but the sword will take him down. I can hear Kratos from here as well screaming out loud. So a listening would actually terrify uh, the viewer. So I don't even know if we should even do that because they're shouting so loud. But the thing is, just shouting that loud, sometimes it's not about intimidating your opponent, but it's about just giving yourself that confidence. As we now see Royal 2 just trying to take control of top mid here. They've still got the lead, the flag is being pulled, but this might have just be a little bit of a willy-nilly pull just to try and distract them. Royal 2 as well comes in, lays down some shots into the body. He's making a statement. Trying to get in the nade, it's had not a bad idea coming out here from Royal 2, but... Gotta watch out though, he's out of ammo, and I really love that play, to come back and play a little bit of defense. That's one of the things that you really have to be aware if you're a top team. Never letting another player inside your base distracting you. Get that guy out ASAP and focus on getting and being offensive. That's one of the things that Boo Boo brought up today that I really like. The best defense is a strong offense, so I really like to see these guys play aggressive and just show no fear. And, and that's what has to happen in Halo 5. You have to get a little bit fortunate in terms of, you know, oh, it's uh, the, the timing. I guess you can say they call it the Call of Duty timing. Look left and the guy pops out as soon as you do. So th that happens very often in Halo 5. And one of the things that eliminates that Gaston is when you practice a lot. And who's very well practiced and organized? Optic Gaming. Yeah, for sure. And in the moment, they've got crowd pleasers with their backs to the wall. And that means Snakebite can push in and run this flag as well. A few kills are coming out on the side of crowd pleasers, but he's still running this flag. And he's got a teammate there to help him out. It looks like it is lethal there trying to grab this one. He's going to be able to pull it. He sh if he jumps up, he should be able to slam it down for 2-0. to zero, And that is going to be easy peasy. Ground pound coming through. And Optic just continuing their fine form here. Crowd pleasers really struggling to get out of their base, Tom. The thing is, is crowd pleasers, they're all just pushing in one by one right now. There's not a cohesive, you know, all on the same page push coming out from these guys. And Optic Gaming, they're just picking them apart right now because they're just so well-rounded. This team has to be so frustrating to play against because very rarely do you see them make mistakes and very rarely do you see them miss shots. Like you just saw right there, Lethal just bulldozing his way into the base with that splinter grenade. Did so much damage, 
got two kills, weakened Nated in terms of putting him into this position now where he can't even push out towards the pink street and bought enough time for these guys to maybe make a play on towards that camouflage. And as soon as Nated wants to push, he gets lit up from all different angles. The thing that Opting are doing really well is they've just split up the spawns as well of crowd pleasers. Rather than them getting four down and then pulling a flag and then getting another four down, at the moment it's two dying, then another two. So constantly Optic have that number as numbers advantage and they are slaying accordingly because of it now. We are going to see Nader just trying to make a play in the opposition base here, but grenades <laughs> coming through and they will suss him out. The hit markers will let them know where they are whilst the flag is being pulled by Frosty and he is going to chuck this one across the map. He knows full well Nader is there, so this is a really important battle for him. Yeah, and Snakebite has the camo, so he's another important player as well on the map. And it looks like that's going to wear out, but he did toss a splinter grenade perfectly, and Nated still hasn't been cleaned up, so this is a possible opportunity here. And this would be very big if Nated's able to stop this return, because, again, this is a momentum-based team. So there it is. Kratos gets the return. Now you're starting to see the first time here that these guys on Crowd Pleasers have found their footing in the series. And that's going to be Snakebite shutting it down immediately when it happens. Yeah, they did push in, but unfortunately for them, Optic off the spawn were able to shut them down immediately. So no flag ball going to come out just yet. We are still at two and zero, but I think the good point is that crowd pleasers didn't allow Optic to put that third in, so the game's not over just yet. Royal Two is just hitting shots here, there, and everywhere at the moment, taking down the Noxide. And now he can push out, just waiting for his teammates to spawn with him as well. They have top mid control. They've got control of the whole map to be honest, but just as I say that, Straight Sick picks up a kill onto Lethal to allow them to get back into the game. Storm Rifle comes out, does miss the melee. The Snake Bite is just letting everyone know where he is right now. Yeah, he's, you know, the voted most clutched by all the players. You saw that film, or if you didn't see that film over um, in between, I think it was Vegas or maybe St. Louis, but it was definitely one of the last couple of events where they, everyone voted Snake Bite the most clutch player. And the guy is not only clutch, he's a great leader. Everyone on Optic Gaming, they are very composed in terms of the way that they give constructive criticism. They take it, they dish it out, they receive it very equally. So that's one of the things that makes Optic Gaming so strong, and that's why you see so much improvements in their game. Snake Bite now just defending as well. And as you said earlier, really important to have good defense. And I suppose when you've got a two to zero lead, you can just sit back a little bit. You don't want to turtle up too much and allow the other team to come back into things. But that's three down now for crowd pleasers. And the flag is moving in the hands of Royal Two. He tosses it to Snake Bite. And this should be easy pickings. They've got them on spawn now. You can see all the kills in the kill feed. And Snake Bite is going to be able to put this third one in. That's going to be game one going to Optic Gaming. Wow. What a way to start the series, Tom. What a dominating game, number one, coming from Optic Gaming. They were showing no mercy there to the crowd pleasers. And looking at the kills and the deaths coming out from the from the Prowler, overall, 59 slakes, yeah. 42. So just putting in serious work there as you take a look at the individual stats. You know, everyone pretty even, you know, negative three, negative four here and there coming out from the guys on the crowd pleasers. But Optic Gaming, these guys, again, are playing top-notch Halo right now. Whoever wants to take these guys down have to be playing at their best. And that is so scary to see how well they dominate in that game number one when they dropped game number one in their first series of the day. Yeah, and I mean, against Supremacy, when they dropped that game, it was, I think, 196 they lost. It was a very close one. It's not like they were overrun immediately, but I'm starting to question who are the real crowd pleasers, because Optic at the moment, they have got some a lot of fans in the audience here today, and I'm sure watching from home as well. But crowd pleasers just didn't get off to a good start. They were constantly behind. They weren't able to get back into the game because of the sheer control coming out yeah, from Optic. That's the Do they word. just need to start a little bit faster in no, the next game? That's the keyword. The keyword that you used was control, and they were never able to find it. They never found themselves in pink. They never found themselves getting camo. They never found themselves getting sword. They didn't get into the enemy's bubble. They didn't do any single thing that they had to do in that game to set themselves up for success. They were trying to. But the positioning from Optic Gaming, the teamwork from Optic Gaming, just how well they played that game, it was over when it, when it started pretty much. I mean, it was so well executed from the Optic Gaming side. There's nothing else that you can say. But overall, you can just brush that game off, move into game number two, because the way that game types are set up in Halo 5, if you get to a good start, if you get control, then you never know what happens. This is going into Rig Slayer here. So if you get that scatter shot, you get that sniper rifle, get into these close range 
um, fights. Every game type is so different in Halo 5. That's why I really love seeing these series played out in best of fives and even better when it gets to the best of sevens. Yeah, I was going to ask, like, how much of that control transfers over to Rig Slayer? But you've pretty much answered that question yourself. It's obviously a great chance now for crowd pleasers to get back into the series. I do worry if they're going to go 2-0 down here, how their morale is going to be. When we were speaking during the qualifiers, I was saying, crowd pleasers, amazing if they're winning, but a lot of personality yeah. on that side. If, they, if they're losing, that's a big clash of personality. Well, you remember that flag that they got the return mm -hmm. when Nated snuck around, got under the base, got hit with that random grenade, stayed alive, got the perfect shots. That was the first time you heard him yell. And we're over here casting, but they're pretty far away. I mean, I, I don't have a you know tape measure on me, but I want to say <laughs> that is definitely two tape measures length worth. So probably about 70 feet away from me over there, these guys are. But they're playing from the blue side. That's the good thing. So I want to see if maybe Dinoxide or Nated, maybe Straight Sick. Heck, I've seen even Kratos be the main sniper for these guys and grab it in the start. So they should be able to put a 50-50 fight up for the scatter shot. 100% they should be able to get the sniper rifle. And let's see who it's going to be. It's going to be Kratos again. Yeah, kicking things off here. Halo World Championships 2017. It's game two between crowd pleasers and Optic. Can they get back into this series? Kratos does have a couple of nades to take down a Frosty there, but he hasn't picked up the sniper just yet. Nadine's managed to find Royal 2 as well. So they've got an element of control. This is a much better start than we saw in the previous game. SMG kill coming out as well. So that sniper is still there, but here comes Snakebite from behind because he's got the camouflage. He's found a double and he's looking for more. He is thirsty for kills. Well, I know Dave's about 10 feet away from me, but I think it's about time for him to pass that Captain Clutch tag on over to your boy Snakebite because this game was all in crowd pleasers' hands and Snakebite just snapped it right out of there. Hit him right on the wrist, it dropped on the floor, and Snakebite picked it up. Yeah, and now they've got the sniper to work with. He can reposition himself as well. Also finds a battle rifle, so he's got all the goodies to work with. But Kratos is able to find a kill onto Frosty there. So things are going to slow down ever so slightly. They don't want to run into a Snakebite who does have a camouflage as it wears off. It does just dissipate off him, so now he can just wait as well. We'll move on over to Observer Mode to see exactly what's going on. You can see the x-rays there you can see there are a couple of players just waiting around so crowd pleasers deciding to slow it down so that they don't run into the sniper rifle but are they going to get bitten by the snake as he will just continue to retreat as native finds a kill into frosty look at this rotation snake bite charging all the way across the map all the players pushing towards the barrel side so this is the perfect rotation coming out from Optic Gaming, and there it is. They are in the ideal situation now, getting on over towards the bunker. And it doesn't seem like from the player outlines, anybody is in position. And hello, there's the sniper rifle guy. He has rotated all the way back, crowd pleasers. Now you may have to do another ring around the rosy over here. With the camouflage coming up, you know that Snakebite got that last one. I'm curious to see if he's gonna run it again. Yeah, incredible movement coming out from Snakebite. But I mean, incredible from the rest of Optic to be able to protect him and allow him to do so. Yes, okay, he hit a nice little snapshot so that his teammates could finish off a kill of the player that was chasing him as now he's going to continue to try and find shots with his sniper rifle is getting slightly aggressive and will actually catch Kratos from behind here and the rotations from Optic are phenomenal they are not just going to wait and let this game slow down they want to get in the face of the crowd pleasers and they are finishing things off great stuff from Snakebite and now they have a four kill lead yeah, you could tell these guys are just so calm collected I want to actually go into an Astro listen in with the guys from Optic Gaming, let's go ahead and switch on out of the Observer Mode and see what these guys are communicating. Alright, no free deaths here. I'm gonna go outside the map and look for... Like, it was the end base, yep, man. Uh, we're picks, no free deaths. I got this. Yeah, I'm about to hit him with a Kobe watch. There's one back, uh, I got a back on. Barrels. I'm at LeBron. Two, two barrels. Oh, shows. Two snipers coming up. Snipers coming up in five. Somebody go back bunker. Grab, somebody go back bunker. Grab, yeah, somebody go back bunker. Grab. Yeah, yeah, bunker, grab I will. I will. I will. I'm just gonna watch it. He's gonna I'm just gonna. Nice Peter. Another one. He's scatter. He's got scatter sniper. I'm just gonna, gonna need it. Yeah. 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 Big lead. Yeah. 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 They're they're going for it. Alright. They're 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 Yo, look up in field. It's yeah. I'm on the map. It's off the map. It's off the map. Alright. Man, I'm coming back up though. One's basement. Danger. Look, look, come barrels. Yeah. Basement in the corner. Red. I can get him. I can get him. I can get him. He's gonna jump, but we can go home. Yep. No free deaths. Yo, Dan, what are you doing? Nice. Nice. Watch. He's gonna die. Big lead. Full snipe. No free deaths. Top or low? Uh, I'm sitting white corner. There's a guy. Top. Watch yeah, I'm, top. I'm blocking bunker one side. There's a guy uh, connector around me. Let me go outside here and look at that. Little. We, 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 have, we don't have to take any plays right now. Uh, I'm blocking bunker. Go. He's he's gonna jump. Okay. There's one here. Yeah. The cat needed. I don't know. I'm like bottom nest, I think. Or if, I'm just hearing wanna, a, a yeah, gate rattle. They wanna burn the clock. Let them burn the clock. You can peek. Yeah. You can just honestly, you can yo sit on the pile. Yeah, I gotcha. Yeah, I gotcha. Yo, nest bridge. Catwalk. 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 Catwalk.
I got killed by Carmine. One barrel. He's back out. 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 He's back I hear you guys. I'm gonna yeah, try yeah, to yeah, 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 might be screwed up because it's off the map. So might be off the second too. Very calm and collected audio coming out from this Optic squad. Even when Snakebite is hitting shots like that, I mean, I, the contrast probably from the CP boys is unreal. But when the game was slowing down, Tom, you just heard their nice and quiet communications coming through from them, just very calm. Yeah. One of the things that I love about listening to Optic Gaming is one, that is a very, I think, different listening we've heard from Optic Gaming in the past. I feel like one of the players has really stepped up uh, the intensity level, which I really like to see. And it looks like a little bit of a comeback coming in here for the crowd pleasers as Kratos was able to grab the camo. But um, they pinpoint so well, Gaskin. That's the one word that I think about there. Pinpoint accuracy with their callouts. And they really like to single people out. And that's one of the things that made them so dangerous where they continue to the call out. Once one person gets, you know, hey, there's a guy at Whitehall. Well, they follow up that call with the guy's name, where he's going. I'm weak, I can't help you. Oh, I'm looking, I'm not looking. All of those little things just help you with the way that your screen looks and it makes it seem like these guys are just, you know, masters of Halo, but once they, they, they really are, but it comes from the communication. That's where it all starts. You can listen to your headphones as much as possible, but that was just, you know, great, great comms coming out from Optic. Well, let's see how calm the communications are coming out from crowd pleasers as we're gonna jump into another Astro listening. Dead. New snipe soon. Uh, uh, right. New snipe. New snipe. Uh, two bucker right now. Yeah, new snipe soon. They're gonna push Nesbridge. I'm gonna E2. Watch Nesbridge. Yo, Artie Pipes. Pipes. Shoot me. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. They're gonna fly out. White corner. White corner. Watch out. Watch out. White corner. Watch out. White corner. Snipe is up. I'm gonna E2. E2 is scattered. Nice. E2 is scattered. Weak. E2 is scattered. What's up? Almost 20. They're gonna E2 weak. Well, well, well. E2 is weak. Both weak. Yo, Snipe Paul. Snipe Paul right now. Lethal. Lethal. Snipe Paul. Lethal. Long haul. Long haul. Do one. Push him. Push him. Brett needs help. Yeah, Camo 28, guys. Go Let's go, man. Two barrels. Two barrels, nice. One dead. All right, stay up. Two barrels on me, guys. Camo and two. Barrels, guys. Gotta barrels. make a play for this camo. Dude, where? Camo Someone's gonna have to guys. shoot yeah, it camo 20. 20. 20. I'll try to shoot it down. I need to. I'm going to Someone needs to go sewers for this. I'm shooting it. I'm gonna shoot it down at uh, 28. 30. Well, well. Shooting at 30. Well, 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 guys. My corner, my corner. Camo's gonna fall. Camo's gonna fall. He's on it. He's on it. In trenches. He has it. He has it. right now. Trenches. Two shots. He doesn't have it. It's still up. I died. Top rail killed me. He's gonna push you, right? They're gonna probably have camo now. Camo is still up. Damn, it was, they probably have it now. Watch white corner. Whitehall, Whitehall. Bunker, small bunker. Yeah, bunker as well. Nice, Snipe off the mask. Snipe off the mask. Snipe off the mask. I'm going top rail. Alright, we got it. Yes, yes. Nah, we're working together. Yes, yes, got it. Yeah, Snipe off. Dude. Whitehall, white corner. White corner. Small behind them, guys. White corner? White corner, yeah. I don't know where you went. I'm dying now. Top rail. And actually, crowd pleasers sound a little bit deflated. Some of those call-outs almost sound like they're moaning a little bit, like, ah, oh, two over here, ah, oh, I died, where was my support? They are oh, slowly I trickling behind. With Gaskin. <laughs> oh man. Not again. We don't have breaks all day today. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> It is becoming a bit of a stomp now from Optic Gaming as they are just trickling further and further ahead. And we are. We need to see something different coming out of Crowd Pleasers if they're going to get back into this game. They need to get that sniper rifle, they need to get control of a particular side of the map and just shut down Optic because currently Optic just running away with this top. Yeah, they are, and they're just such a strong rig team. They're even better on rig strongholds, which is a little bit scary to think about, but it's a momentum game. That's why the start of CTF Truth was so important for this crowd pleasers team. The way that you know the flag was returned and they weren't able to get momentum off that was a big deal, and Optic Gaming just continued to carry that over. Yeah, but now we see Kratos just trying to jump up, see what we can do what he can do. But they are 16 kills behind at the moment. And to be honest, I think even if they were able to gain control of the sniper rifle and the camouflage and the stuff of the map, they are still going to struggle to overturn this difference. Kratos will continue to do what he can, though. He is staying alive. And we'll just grab Hunter to, to continue his survivability here as he looks for more. And it slows down ever so slightly. I think that's the only way crowd pleasers can win this game, to be honest, is to slow it down and take it kill by kill. If they continue to yeah. run in one by one, Optic will just finish this off quickly. Strategically, the biggest turning point of this game had to be when Snake might rotate the sniper rifle. Would you agree, Gaskin? That was just a phenomenal play coming out from Optic. And the fact that crowd pleasers didn't have anybody waiting, the thing is, is Gaskin, 
doing that barrels push, it was really smart by crowd pleasers, but you can't do a four man push. What you do is you keep a croucher in the bunker waiting for them to come around or you keep a croucher over towards the engine side. And then when they start filtering you, you say, hey guys, I'm here waiting for you. I've been, you know, thinking about this all day, all night, baby. And that's just not happening. They sent all four over towards the barrel side and they got punished hard by Snake Bite. Yeah, and I think that's what makes Optic such a good squad is they, they can respond to what's going on at that time. They saw four players coming towards them. Snake Bite was like, hey, well, I'm just going to get the hell out of here. I'm going to keep this sniper rifle. And then it just snowballed out of control, really. That early uh, control with the sniper rifle has just poised them into this position. And now they are one kill away from going two maps up against Crowd Pleasers. There we have it. To be honest, Crowd Pleasers never really in that game ever since that rotation that you were speaking about, Tom. Easy peasy. And now we move on to map number three. Yeah, moving on to map number three. That was almost a stake, but not quite there. And oh gosh, these guys from Optic Gaming, they are playing some top-notch Halo right now. Looking at the stats, Kratos going to even Steven 10-10. Well, 10-6 and 10. 10 kills, 10 deaths, but... Everybody going positive besides Royal 2, which is the scary part because Royal 2 is the main slayer on the team. So if you can go 9, 12, and 9 and be playing a support role and you're known as being the guy, the go-to guy, the MVP guy next to Frosty in terms of the kills and deaths, that is great for Optic Gaming. And was it just another situation where crowd pleasers really lacked control? We, we saw them obviously go for that four-man push, didn't really work out. Anything you really spotted they could have done differently uh, aside from that? Yeah, I mean, th that's just all it was, was that four-man push. Again, you got to keep that croucher. You got to keep the anchor. That's the thing. It, it, you can call it whatever you want, but someone had to sit back and wait for these guys to push. Other than that, they didn't do anything that was, you know, wrong. They challenged some fights that they probably shouldn't have challenged. They were getting picked apart over and over by these guys, but just phenomenal play. And I think it was three uh, power-up pickups as well in, in the uh, other side of one for crowd pleasers. So Optic just completely dominating it. And if you have those camouflages to work with, it just makes the game that little bit easier for you as well. You can be sneaky, especially if you've got a scat shot in your back pocket as well. You can just surprise the other team. And crowd pleasers now moving into Plaza Strongholds really need to switch things up. They need to gain some sort of momentum. They need to find some sort of form. Maybe they do need to get loud again, even if they do, do just get kind of one little kill, one LPR, one pistol, get loud and proud, yeah. even if it's not to intimidate your opposition. Get an assault rifle kill on a guy that's no shields, get pumped up exactly. about it. Because, I mean, heck, you only got 31 kills last game. Yeah. So if you get one kill, get hyped about it. I mean, every kill matters. What's so crazy to think about Gaskin is the amount of pressure that are on these guys with how much there is to perform. Every day, these guys practice, and they practice, and they practice. And then it all comes down to, what, a 30-minute window here for these guys? A 30-minute to one-hour window after the thousands of hours of practice that they put in. It's all about harnessing that energy, harnessing that moment. And right now, we're not seeing crowd pleasers do it. Now, what's the thing? When you are the best, if you even drop a map, everyone starts asking questions. When Supremacy took game one earlier against Optic, Everyone exploded on Twitter saying, oh my God, Optic have dropped the game. Oh my God, what's going on? Everything's yeah. going wrong. And yes, okay, they came back, they won it 3-1, and Optic are thinking, well, what the hell, it's only one map, who cares? But you've got so much eyes on you, so much pressure, so much riding on your shoulders. But now we need to see crowd pleasers really do something a little bit different. We are starting things off. It is going to be Plaza Strongholds. I want to see them get loud. I want to see them excite the crowd. I want to see the crowd pleasers that we saw during the qualifiers, the crowd pleasers we saw at Vegas, because at the moment, they really look lackluster. But this is what Opti Gaming does to you. That's what's so frustrating playing against them, because they just take the life right out of you. And there it is. Oh, I saw a little scream right there, or maybe a bark. During the load. Someone stepped on his big toe. That's what it sounded like to me. Well, here we are, kicking things off now. We'll start off with Naden as well. He's not really been loud and proud. He hasn't really done anything too crazy. He is just going to try and contest the yard. And actually, I'm going to move across to him because I was on the wrong screen. There we go once again. I was on the spectator view, but Naden now is going to push in, try and find a second. He's going to go for bottom mid and try and capture this one. Always really important to get bottom mid nice and early because it is a very difficult stronghold to get a hold of. But he's going to be shut down immediately when he was pushing in. Yeah, and here it is, Royal 2 getting into his signature spot in Plaza. This guy loves to hold S4, so expect him to go up there after this, and there it is, going into the little 
cave, I guess you can say, the little Royal 2 cave. This guy loves to just lock positions down. And what a better, what a, the best spot on this map, pretty much. And the knock side shuts it down instantly. So that's a good start here for crowd pleasers. They're not able to get points that they want quite yet, but they're at least able to get a couple of slays over here. That's going to be his camo finally wearing out for Frosty. And he's going to drop. So now maybe that little bark over there for crowd pleasers got them hyped up. <laughs> maybe the bark wasn't enough. We did see total control from Opti Gamer, but now total control for crowd pleasers here. But there is going to be just yard taken. Is Nady going to decide to push in or is he going to wait with his teammates? It does look like they're going to make the move into yard, try and take control of this. They're not letting up. They want to go for more, but they're just going to be punished by Royal 2, who was waiting. As you said, just having one of those players just to wait around to lurk, as it were, and try and catch anyone off guard. This game's so fast paced, there's so much you know, communication and it's very hectic. There's you know, sprinting, thrusting, all that stuff. That's why if you just slow it down, play the radar, these guys don't expect it. That's that's one of the keys to winning the tournament, is do something that's unexpected. Because again, hours, hundreds of hours of grinding. These guys have played against the best and the, and the worst players. And what's interesting enough is if you have control and if you're on the top of the map and you're S4 and there's another player bottom middle, if that player is a pro or not, you should be winning that fight. So it's all about the positioning that you give yourself. And Optic Gaming, they are going to continue to do what they do and try to lock this map down. And it is, of course, so difficult to try and do the unexpected because, as you said, when you've played the thousands of hours, you've almost come up in every single situation. Nated is now going to try and take bottom mid once again. Is anyone from Optic going to drop down to contest this one, or is this going to be nice and easy? Finally, we see some contest, but it's just a little bit too late from Optic as Snakebite is taken down by Nated. Finally, Lethal comes in to trade that one. And now we'll have to see Optic just try and get back on this. They've managed to get back into the game. It's 23-25 now. They've got control of two of the strongholds, but not bottom mid. And I guess that is a setup you can work with if you've got the yard and the nest. It's not the normal kind of uh, setup you'd go for, but I suppose if it does work, why not try it? So total control coming out for Optic Gaming. Just going to be temporary, though, as you do see Dinoxide. Nice job getting that kill onto Royal 2. He is out of ammo, though, with his P-Shot, so he has to switch on over to his pistol, which he's also out of ammo for, so that's so unfortunate for Dinoxide, but he's at least distracting these guys, trying to find something desperately. There's the Light Rifle, and he distracts another one. Lethal's going to drop to Kratos. It doesn't matter if this guy has any bullets in his gun. He's still going to try to help his team out and help capture bottom middle. Nice job by crowd pleasers. Yeah, bottom middle as well. Now we need to see the push round try and take uh, Yard, perhaps. But they've got two. Sometimes teams will be more than happy just to have those two strongholds. I personally like to see teams push for the three, get aggressive, just not allow the other team to breathe whatsoever. But I suppose when you're against Optic Gaming, the best of the best, you can only take what you are given as Kratos is just going to defend over here at Nest as well. No one pushing him just yet. Needs to stay alive though. Needs to be very aware of his surroundings, aware of where his teammates are to make sure that he can escape and escape he does. Crowd please is bringing this one back, trying to tie it up. Optic Gaming had some pretty nice setups, but I gotta give props where it's due. These guys have broken a triple cap already and some pretty solid setups when these guys have had shotgun and camo. So that's not very easy to do. Much easier said than done when you're going up against Optic Gaming, the best team in the world. So let's see if Optic Gaming is gonna be able to give these guys a taste of their own medicine and break the setup coming out from Crowd Pleaser. Snakebite doing the right thing, pushing on over towards the loop and controlling this side of the map. Where is the rest of his teammates though? Looks like they're trying to go over towards bottom middle and Nest. And it looks like Nest is going to be captured. Bottom middle is on its way. That player completely out of position. Straight sick drops pretty much for free. And Camo coming up here soon. This is great news for Optic Gaming. This is pretty much where they can run away with this game in this series. Oh, and Snakebite finds that kill as well onto Dinoxide. Absolutely huge. Unfortunately, does get taken down eventually, but they've still got total control. Crowd Pleasers were doing well to keep this a very scrappy game, but now it looks like Optic are finally finding a little bit of form and control. And look at the amount of players from Crowd Pleasers having to bombard onto Yard just to be able to pick up one stronghold. And now they're locked in. Optic can look across the cafe, they can look into Yard, they can pick and choose where they want to hold as Crowd Pleasers need to try and escape this. Yeah, I just want to point out that while all this is happening, Frosty has sat back and he eventually died, but his job was anchoring over towards the snipe side. So now you're going to see someone else come and try to fill his position as everyone is going for bottom, middle, and nest now because they have two players from Optic over towards the yard. So that's an example where Optic Gaming, they wish they had that back. Ooh, nice shots by Snakebite, but not able to figure it, um, get that kill. But they don't give up bottom, middle, so that's good. That could have been pretty disastrous for Optic, trading bottom, middle, and nest for yard. That's not a good trade, so... 
Now they're going to try to get this triple cap back, put two people in nests, try to run away with this one. Looks like it's going to be a nest for yard trade, and that's definitely a good trade. It was a good push coming out from crowd pleasers, splitting up two and two, going nest and bottom middle. But unfortunately for them, Optic were just <laughs> spread across the map, able to watch all the angles, and they still have control. And now crowd pleasers back, stuck in that yard. They're trying something different now, trying to push down through these stairs up to cinema. But they're just being shut down one by one. And constantly, there is a member of Optic just behind, going for that backstab, just waiting in uh, bottom middle and making sure that CP aren't able to pick up any strongholds easily. And now we see the aggression coming out from Optic as well. They're taking Yard. They want total control once again. They want to put this game to bed, Tom. They really do, and it's so close to being over. All they have to do is probably kill these guys one more time on the side of Crowd Pleasers, and it shouldn't be too hard. They've outslayed them 46 to 36 in this game so far, and Snakebite also has the camo. So let's see if PJ Snakebite can do anything to try to secure this series for Optic Gaming. And that's a good start, killing the guy over towards the snipe side. He's predicting another player to come up that ramp, and he is. Nice shots, only missing one onto Kratos. Staying alive with this camo, this is all he needs to do. Continue to try to capture Nest with his teammate, and there he is, po poking in. Just trying to double cap this as fast as possible. Only six more points, and now they're gonna try to probably rotate towards bottom middle because the guys are gonna have to immediately move on the side of crowd pleasers, and there's nothing CP can do. They all drop three dead. Bottom middle being captured by Optic Gaming. That's a swift 3-0 from the green wall. Very, very impressive series from Optic Gaming. Yeah, Optic showing why they are the reigning champions and why they are the favorites to take this whole tournament as well. Crowd Pleasers didn't even have a look in in that series, to be honest, but perhaps they could take some.